Hello? It's 14 minutes after the hour. We are here in Tanza Cavite, here in the Philippines. And, yes. And uh, we're missionaries. Uh, there are riots taking place in Jerusalem and China has decided that they wanted to ban uh, Philippine fishermen from the waters of the Philippines prevent them from fishing in areas claimed by China but owned by the Philippines and uh, my sweetheart has got some music and a greeting, and then we're going to get into uh, the book of Zechariah, the Bible study for today. Yeah, good evening, Philippines, once again. And uh, I am um, uh, alarming the whole Filipinos to wake up. And let's all stand up and pray, ask for the guidance and grace of the Lord. That he will restore our land from the uh, spirit of the enemies, especially the spirit of the darkness. And um, of course, uh, good morning to the other side of the world, especially in the United States. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening also. So join with us as I sing this song for the Lord, we will ask His grace and mercy to restore our land in the power of, of His Holy Spirit.
with the power, through the power of His grace and mercy, that the Holy Ghost, the fire from heaven, will come down to restore every land who seek, who seek the presence of the Lord. Those nations who had repented will be able to experience once again the restoration of the Lord in the land. So keep, keep on with us and join with us through studying the Word of God and through music and prayer. We're going to uh, turn to the book of Zechariah. In fact, I think I'll turn to the book of uh, Zechariah uh, and start maybe with uh, chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. Give you a little bit of time to turn there. Uh, if you're following our broadcast or podcast or our uh, Bible studies, you'll know that uh, Jesus promised. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, I'm going to slow down so that my sweetheart can translate for our brothers and sisters yeah. in Tagalog. Yeah, of course. Kung kayo po ay kung patuloy niyo po kami nasusundan sa aming broadcast araw-araw ay alalahanin po natin lagi na malapit na ang pagdating ng Panginoon at siya ay nangako na siya ay babalik pag tapos na ang kanyang pagbuo ng ating mga tahanan sa kalangitan and right at this moment, we don't know if he's coming right now or later. Oh, yeah. Sooner or later. We just watch. Jesus tells us that uh, we need to be watching for his return. Sinasabi po ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo na dapat po talaga tayo ay laging mapagbantay sa sitwasyon ng ating People think that they have plenty of time, but the world is really falling apart. And it's getting more chaotic. Here in this world, we're on the brink of World War Three. Yeah, na lalo tayong nahihirapan, marami ang naroon sa gitna ng digmaan, sa gitna ng mga mga kagutuman, physically, ah, physically, and the spiritually, nandyan din tayo sa gitna ng mga pagkikipagdigma sa ating pananampalataya. So, ang ating kalaban ay hindi lang physical, kundi spiritual man din. So, kailangan po natin, lalo nating lalo nat, nating pagigtingin ang ating paglilingkod sa ating Panginoon. And, uh, unfortunately for the Philippines, we have uh, in this nation faced world war before yeah at uh, uh, tag dito sa pagkasawing palad unfortunately you know, uh, naranasan na rin natin ang magkaroon po ng gera sa ating bansa in uh, December of 19 41 December 8th the Philippines were attacked suddenly and uh, plunged into World War 2 December 8th, 8th 1941 41 
ang ating bansang Pilipinas ay bigla na lang dinaluhong ng mga hapon okay, sa pangalawang digma, digmaan World War II People in the uh, Philippines they were taken prisoner sent to concentration camps it was not pretty Yeah, marami po ang mga Pilipino nakaranas ng hirap dinadala po sila sa mga uh, sa ay, mga kampo kung saan ay pinapapili siguro si kung magiging makahapon ba sila o mga Pilipino at kung mga Pilipino ay talaga namang pinapatay na lang hindi po masarap ang buhay ng may digmaan in December 8th of this year It will be 80 years. Sa parating na December 8th, ngayong taon, magiging 80 taon na ang nangyari. And people in the Philippines, they seem to have forgotten that they have been attacked before. Hindi ko lang alam kung nakalimutan na ng maraming mga Pilipino ang karanasan ng digmaan ng kalawang pangdaigdigang digmaan ng panahon na yun kasi napakahaba na ng panahon. So, maaaring nangamatay na yung mga nakaranas ng gera noong unang panahon at konti na lang natitira. Kaya yung mga ngayon, hindi pa nakaranas ay nagre-relax po sila. And so, now, China is, uh, has more than 200 boats in the waters of the Philippines. Ngayon, uh, paulit-ulit na lamang yung balita na yan, dalawang daan na barko ng mga inchik yan dyan sa ating kapaligiran ng ating karagatan. And China has announced that they are going to ban uh, the Philippines from fishing in waters that belong to the Philippines. Nakakainis ano? Nakakagalit, nakakapuot kung hindi lang Kristiyano. Kasi sa atin po yung karagatan na yan. At ipinagbabawal ng mga inchik na mangisda ang mga kapwa natin Pilipino ang hanap buhay ay sa pagingisda lamang umaasa. And I want to tell you that our friends here in the Philippines, they love their fish. Of course, gustong gusto natin ang isda ay mga Pilipino isda ang hilig natin. And so, just like that, at the drop of a hat, even though people really don't want to, they could be involved in the Third World War, just like they were in the Second World War. God forbid. And at the same time, In Jerusalem, there's dispute, there are riots taking place on the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount has the uh, holy sites for Islam and for Judaism and for Christianity. And then, ang pagkakababahagi ng mga, mga alitan ng Kristiyano, ng Islam, at ng Hudyo sa Israel. So, we, naniniwala lang po tayo na ang Diyos na nga may hawak ng buong taigdig. At alam naman natin na paulit-ulit na lang ginigira ang Israel. What takes place on the Temple Mount can easily throw the world into a third world war. Anong mangyari sa, sa, sa temple ng Jerusalem, maaaring magaganap ang ikatlong dig, digmaan pang daigdig. Diyos ang may hawak, kaya sinasabi ko sa inyo, kailangan nating maging, mag, mag, ma, maging uh, mapagbantay. Igtingan natin ang ating paglilingkod sa Diyos at huwag tayong mag-relax. And the Philippines and Israel, they have been allies going back to the start 
of the Philippine Republic in 1946. And today, as we return from Dasparina, I saw a banner today hanging on a fence uh, championing the cause of the uh, the People's Liberation Army here in the Philippines. You don't allow that. They just put it there. Yes, it's not allowed, but that means there's someone here in the Philippines siding with the communist causing disruption here in the Philippines possible disruption we'll just pray for the Lord Lord's mercy and guidance we need to be strengthened in our faith stand firm in the promises of God in other words this is not a time for the Believers in the Philippines, this is not time to daydream or to fall asleep. Hindi po itong panahon ng mga mananampalataya sa mundo, o lalo sa Pilipinas, na magtulog-tulugan lang po tayo at patuloy na mga harap. Regardless of where you are in this world, this is not the time to be sleeping. Kahit saan man kayo sa, sa daigdig na ito, itong panahon na hindi na dapat nagpatulog-tulog sa ating pananampalataya. So this more, uh, right now, with this study, we're in uh, Zechariah chapter 12. That's in the Old Testament. Ayun ngayon ay pupunta sa pag-aaral sa aklat ng Zacharias. Sa lumang tipan po tayo na makikita ang Sakarias. Kailangan sanayin natin ang ating mga sarili na matuto po tayo maghanap ng mga talata sa banal na kasulatan. Marami po mga Kristiyan nagsasabi na sila ay mga anak ng Diyos pero hindi alam magbuklat ng Biblia at manalangin. Pupunta ka ba ng langit yan? Hindi. Sinasabi ko sa iyo, hindi madali ang papuntang langit. Mas madaling sumali sa bawat sikta, sa bawat reliyon, pero hindi madali ang papuntang langit. And this puts uh, what is taking place in Jerusalem right now. It shows you this right now in the Word of God. At kung anong nangyayari sa bansang Israel ngayon, makikita po natin dito sa salita ng Diyos na pag-aralan natin ngayong gabi. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 1 Zechariah Zacharias Kapitulo 12 oh no. The burden of the word of the Lord uh, for Israel saith the Lord which stretches forth the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him Ito ang pinakasabi ni Yahweh sa Israel ng Diyos na gumawa ng langit at ng lupa nagbibigay buhay sa tao. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and Jerusalem. Ang Jerusalem ay gagawin kong parang malaking sisidlang puno ng alak upang ang sino mang maghangad lumusog dito ay maging parang lasing na susuray-suray. Ang paglusob sa Jerusalem ay paglusob na rin sa buong Juda. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Sa araw na yon ang mga bansa ay magka 
Kaisa laban sa Jerusalem ngunit gagawin ko itong tulad sa isang malaking bato na mahirap galawin. Sino mang gumalaw nito ay naghahanap ng sakit ng katawan. See, uh, this disagreement goes all the way back to the time of Genesis. Makita po natin itong mga pinag-aaralan natin ngayon at kanilang pinagtatalo-talunan ay makikita natin simula pa sa aklat ng Genesis. And so, uh, God promised to Abraham and to Sarah, He promised a son and that Abraham would be the father of many nations. Kaya, nga pinangako ng Diyos sa lahi ni Abraham na siya ay maging ama ng maraming bansa. Time went by and uh, Sarah, she got impatient. At lumipas ang maraming panahon at si Sarah ay wala nang pag uh, pas, ano wala na siyang uh, uh, patience sa paghihintay she cannot she, wait longer yeah she thought god needed her help niisip niya siguro kailangan ng dios ng tulong ko so uh, she had an employee uh, And she said, here, uh, why don't you sleep with Hagar so you can get your child? Kaya, pinangunaan niya ang Panginoon. Sinabi niya kay Abraham, tagal lang pangako ng Diyos. Ito na lang ang aking katulong na babae. Sipingan mo na lang siya at baka diyan ka mag-anak at magaganap ang pangako ng Diyos. It wasn't a smart decision. God doesn't really need our help. Hindi po mabuting desisyon ang ginawa ni Sarah sapagkat ang Diyos ang sa totoo. Hindi kailangan ng Diyos ang tulong natin. Tayo ang nangailangan ng tulong ng Diyos. Bagamat tayo naman, kapag nangailangan ng tulong ng Diyos, ay mayroon po tayong bahagi na dapat isagawa para mangyari ang pagkilos ng kamay ng Diyos sa mga buhay natin. So Hagar gave birth to uh, Ishmael. Kaya si Hagar ay nagsilang sa isang sanggol ng pangalan ay si Ishmael. And it, uh, it's not a good thing to have uh, two women in the house <laughs> with only one man. At hindi po talaga maganda na magkasama ang dalawang babae sa isang tahanan at magkasalo sa isang lalaki lang. And so it caused friction between the two women. At nagkaroon po ng pag pagkakainitan sa isa't isa dahil sa desisyon ni Sarah. Nagkaroon po ng problema sa loob ng tahanan. And a little while later, Sarah gave birth to Isaac. At lumipas ang kunting panahon, at si Sarah naman ay nanganap sa sanggol na si Isaac. At iyon ang panahon na ipinangako ng Diyos sa kanila na hindi naantay ni Sarah. And so, uh, two women... Two children, one man, that's not usually a good recipe for success. So, isang tatay, isang asawa, dalawang babae, at dalawang anak, magkaiba ang nanay, hindi po maganda sa loob ng tahanan na magkasama. At hindi po magtatagumpay ang mga bagay na ito. So, um... Abraham chose it. He chose Isaac and Ishmael was rejected. Kaya, ang ginawa ni, is, ni Abraham, pinili niya sa Isaac at pinabayaan niya na si Ishmael. 
So our brothers and sisters in Islam, they don't exactly see it that way. Kaya't ang ating mga kapatiran at mga kaibigan sa Islam ay hindi po nila nakikita ang bagay na yan ng ganun-ganun na lang. Masakit po sa kanilang kalooban ang nangyari. And so, uh, on the Israeli uh, side, they believe that the promise was given to Abraham and to Sarah. At nakikita po ng mga Israelita na da, ang pangako talaga ng Diyos ay ibinibigay niya ito hindi kay Hagar at kay Abraham, kundi kay Sarah at kay Abraham. So his, this has caused a conflict down through the years, even through today. Kaya ito ang naging dahilan, ang maling desisyon ni Sarah, ang naging dahilan kung bakit mayroong mga hidwaan na nangyayari sa bansang Israel at sa karatig bansa at hanggang ngayon ay patuloy pa rin itong nangyayari sa buong mundo. And so... Uh, uh, this manifests right there in Jerusalem. At nangyayari po ito doon din mismo sa bansang Israel sa bansang Israel sa siyudad ng Jerusalem. In Jerusalem the Temple Mount is the most holy uh, place in all of Judaism. Ito po yung templo na ito, ang pinakabanal na lugar kung saan nagkakatipon ang mga Hudyo. But for our friends in uh, Islam, uh, they, they regard uh, Jerusalem as either the second or third most holy yeah. site in all of Islam. Yeah, sa mga, mga Islam naman, kanilang ipinapahayag na pangatlo lang sa pinakabanal na lugar ang Jerusalem. And so, the division continues to today. Kaya at ang pagbabahagi ay patuloy na nangyayari hanggang sa ngayon. Uh, the Romans... Uh, they destroyed the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD and scattered the Jewish people throughout the world at that time. At ang Romanian, winasak nila ang Israel sa panahon ng 70 AD. Okay, at nagsika pagkalat ang mga Israelita sa buong mundo. So, uh, God promised in Ezekiel uh, 37 that Israel would be restored in the uh, land of Israel and would become a nation again. So, sa aklat ng, ng Ezekiel, ipinangako ng Diyos na kanya pong bubuuin uli ang Jerusalem sa takdang panahon at magiging siyudad uli. Can I have some water? Yes. And uh, the nation of Israel became a sovereign nation again in May of 1948. At ang bansang Israel muli ay naging makapangyarihan sa panahon ng, ng taong 1948. And the Philippines and uh, Israel, they have been very close allies. Uh, Israel became a nation again in 1948. Whereas the Philippines, they became a sovereign nation of... Uh, June or July 4th, 1946. Yeah. Nauna lang ang bansang Pilipinas na nabuo 
maging Republic of the Philippines, mm -hmm. 1946. Yes, and so Israel and uh, the Philippines, they have a, a joint thing going, that joint uh, cooperation. Uh, yung Israel at ang Pilipinas, meron silang bagay na patuloy na pinagkakasunduan at nagkakaisa po sila sa bagay na ito. Nagkasundo. And so, uh, the Philippines is closely tied to the nation of Israel. Kaya't ang Pilipinas ay malapit sa bansang Israel. So, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, Jerusalem will be a burdensome stone. And, uh, and uh, that would be verse 3, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all the people. Uh, though all the people of the earth be gathered uh, together against it. Yeah. In that day, says the Lord, I will smite or attack every horse or vehicle with, uh, uh, I will smite uh, every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open my eyes, uh, I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. So, uh, it says in verse 9, And it shall come to pass in that day I will seek to destroy all the nations that come up against Jerusalem. And we see in the news today these things beginning to come to pass. These things uh, beginning to happen. And we're going to hit this uh, one scripture and then we'll uh, leave off here and pick it up at another time. Mm -hmm. But Zechariah 14 verse 2 well, let's go back to verse 1. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord comes. And that can mean a time of judgment. It says, The day of the Lord comes, and your spoil, your riches, shall be divided in the midst of you. Yes. Some people have great trust in their riches. But, uh, on the judgment time of uh, judgment time of accounting, uh, the rich is going to be dispersed, divided up. For it says, "I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle." The Bible uh, tells us all nations. Right now, uh, most nations are already divided against. Israel and there are some such as the United States that vacillates back and forth back and forth but we can see that uh, this has uh, very nearly come to pass and it says uh, it's going to be bad for the Jewish people uh, said the uh, city will be taken uh, and the uh, houses rifled that means they've gone through and uh, stolen from and the women ravished to indicates that they're going to be raped and half of the city go out into captivity but it says in verse uh, 3 then the Lord then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. It says in verse 4, And his feet in that day, the time in the future, 
His feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst or in the middle thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a great valley. And half of the mountain shall move uh, north and half toward the south. It will be split four ways that day mm -hmm. is coming some of this is in the future but some of this is at the door yeah. this is at the door some of this is reality now so you need to be prepared you need to be ready at all times yeah. did you have another song that you wanted to do sweetheart yeah because we need to be prepared always, hallelujah. And uh, the Lord sees our hearts, desire, whatever it is, for the sake, not only for our own household, not only for our own selves, but for everyone's sake. So, how um, I wish you are always willing to do God's will in, in your life and you are always willing to be partnering with us so we can continue to do the ministry. I, I, missionary thing is a very tough thing for, for everyone, but uh, we are here because of the passion. So passion is from the Lord's heart. And so we have passion also that it is not in the will of God, but missionary thing is a passion from the will of God. So can you offer your life to him as I sing this song? Would you like to join with us? I always sing this song because this is, this could always touch my heart every time I sing this.
want to thank you for being uh, with us today. We're going to close here. We're going to do a prayer. I like to do the Lord's Prayer because it includes just a, I think it's a perfect prayer. It includes everything. Uh, everything that you might need in your life includes everything. Pray with us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus, your Son, gives us the honor, the privilege to call out to you, our Father who art in heaven. We want to glorify your name, magnify your name. We ask that your kingdom come Yes, your kingdom come. Your will be done in our life as it is in heaven. Give us this day, today, our daily bread, what we need in your house. We thank you, Father, that uh, we have the right to come into your presence on a daily basis. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, that people be born again. Lord, that uh, you forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. So uh, we thank you, Lord, that you don't uh, tempt your people with evil. But every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. Lord, uh, there are people in need of those perfect gifts today. We stand on those promises. The righteous are not forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. We thank you, Lord, that you send provision, not just a little but plenty to take care of every every obligation every requirement to you Lord God we give praise honor and glory in the name of Jesus Christ your son we pray amen going to close now this by may the lord uh, bless you and keep you and allow his grace to shine upon yes. you yes yes amen give, give you peace amen and give you peace mm -hmm. and let the lord to shine upon you yes so uh, y'all have a great day dios libendega which means God bless you. Amen.